Hello and welcome to another episode. I am Brian, the unskilled commander. Alright, so if you watched the last game, you know we have a upgrade, downgrade to the setting. This is no longer has the fisheye, and looks like it has pretty good quality too. You can see some decent detail on this one. However, for some reason, the mic doesn't pick up very well, so it's a downgrade there. Eventually, I'm going to have a better setup again in the next year when I can afford it that should put things back using the original camera that had the nice tight frame of just the place play areas and the mic was you know much better on that one. It sounded okay when I edited the in a video for match one. On this side of the mat, it's better. I guess this is where the mic is on the top of the camera, basically. Uh, when I'm on that side of the table, it gets quieter. So what I'm going to try and do is another experiment with this match. I'm just going to talk normally on this side. And when I'm on that side, I'll make sure to lean forward to try and get closer to the mic. We'll see how that one sounds, and then we'll go from there for the third and final matchup of these decks. And then decide if I want to keep using this camera for a few more matches, you know, matches of three, to get me stockpiled into February when I want to try and build, you know, get the new setup going. It's all up in the air, a lot of variables, cost, you know, my job, things like that. But whatever, I'm trying. Hopefully you guys are having a good day. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Check out the rest of the channel. There's some good content, I, th I think. Obviously, I think that, but uh, there's some a high octane I'm really proud of that series. Check that out. The unskilled skits are fun. They should get a, a chuckle or a smile out of you. And then the deck decks are interesting if you want to see the rest of the cards in most of these decks. So we've got match two of goblins versus counters matter versus two different Doctor Who characters. Last game we saw that the Krenko goblins can go pretty fast, but it didn't win, surprisingly, so we'll see if that's consistent, if it's consistently fast and good, or if it was just uh, a fluke from last time. And we rolled the dice. The third Doctor will be going first, so let's go ahead and jump in. Clay a mirrored landscape comes in tapped, and then I will pass. Draw for turn over here. Uh, Zatoria's Proving Ground. It's a triome, as they call them. Swamp, Mountain, Forest. Taps for one of each, well, it taps for one of those three any given time, but it comes in tapped. So I will pass. Draw for turn. We're going to play the Terramorphic Expanse, cracking it into a mountain. Uh, you can see the hands. I've decided to lay them all out, regardless of the sleeves. Make it a little quicker for me to see what's in each hand and try and remember what's in each hand. But it does let you guys kind of see the cards a little bit. You can kind of get an idea for what some of them are. You're not going to, I don't think the quality of the camera is that good that you can tell completely. But you might be seeing that this, there is a soul ring in this opening hand that I could have played on turn one. But since I drew the Terramorphic Expanse, I figure let's go ahead and crack that early and get going. But that's all we can do. We'll pass. Draw for turn. Play the mountain I just drew and pass. Untap, upkeep, draw. I'm going to play a Terramorphic Expanse over here and crack it for an island, I think. We will pass. Untap, upkeep, draw. Play a Dark Moss Bridge comes in tapped. I will go ahead and tap this for green for hardened scales. If one or more counters, plus one, plus one counters, will be put on a creature you control, that many plus one counters will be put on instead. That's all we can do. We're going to pass. Untap over here. Draw for turn over here, playing a mountain, tapping the mountain into the soul ring that we talked about before, tapping the soul ring into a wayfarer's bauble with one mana floating. Unfortunately, there's nothing I can do with that one mana. Well, uh, actually I can, so I will use that one mana and the land that I had originally. We're going to go crack wayfarer's bauble. Get another basic forest, put on the battlefield, tapped. Now that's all we can do, we'll pass. Untap, upkeep, draw. Gonna play a shelter thicket. Does come in tapped, unfortunately. And no one drops, so we're gonna pass. Untap, upkeep, draw. Gonna play a forest for turn. Tapping both to crack the mirrored landscape. 
to go get two forests. Set up good for the doctor on the next turn. We will go ahead and pass. Untap, upkeep, draw. Play an island for turn. Tapping a green and one other to play rampant growth to go get a basic. We'll try for a, a planes. All right, but that's all we can do. We'll pass. Untap, upkeep, draw. Play another mountain for turn. Going to go ahead and tap Soul Ring in a mountain to bring out Krenko, 10 Street Kingpin. A 1 2, whenever he attacks, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on him, then create a number of goblin tokens equal to his power. Going to uh, play 3 to play Flick a Coin. Deals 1 damage to any target. You create a treasure token and you draw a card. I'm going to deal 1 damage to you since you have a permanent on the field. We're going to draw a card and we're going to make a, to a treasure token. I don't know what that little Pac-Man looking thing is supposed to be a treasure a treasure chest, but whatever. That's all we can do. We'll pass. Actually, that's not all we can do. We're going to go ahead and just crack the treasure for one red to play Goblin Lackey. A 1-1 one, one where whenever Goblin Lackey deals damage to a player, you may put a Goblin permanent card from your hand onto the battlefield. Pretty solid Goblin right there. Now that's all we can do. We'll pass. Untap, upkeep, draw. Quandrix Campus, unfortunately, comes in tapped. Yeah, nothing we can do. We're going to pass. Untap, upkeep, draw. Temple of Mystery comes in tapped. When it enters the battlefield, we can scry one. I will leave that there. I will go ahead and tap four to play the third Doctor. A 2-2 two -two with Trample. He gets plus one, plus one for each non-creature artifact or non-creature token you control. And when he enters, you get to make your choice of a treasure, food, or clue token. I'll make a treasure token. So that means he is now a 3-3 with trample. And I'll pass turn. Untap, upkeep, draw. I'll play Undergrowth Stadium. Comes in tapped unless you have two or more opponents, which I do. Sort of. Well, there's not really much point in playing anything, especially without Ramos on the field. And we're one shy of doing that, so let's go ahead and pass. Untap, upkeep, draw. Play a mirrored landscape over here. I'm going to pay one mana to play Exuberant Fusling. So 0, 1, Trample. It gets plus 1, plus 0 for each oil counter on it. When it enters the battlefield and whenever another creature or artifact I control is put into the graveyard, put an oil counter on it. So we'll say that's an oil counter. It's now a 1, 1. We're going to move to combat. We're going to swing both of these. I'm going to swing Krenko at you and goblin lackey at you so on attacking krenko is going to get a counter and then we're going to make two one one green goblin tokens <laughs> why would they be green one one red goblin tokens and so it begins uh you're going to take one two three damage no two damage and you're going to take one damage, but when he deals combat damage to a player, put a goblin permanent from your hand onto the battlefield. I will put Rummaging Goblin onto the battlefield. It's a 1-1 that you can tap to discard a card and draw a card. That's all we can do here. We're going to pass. Untap, upkeep, draw. I'll play a forest for turn. Tapping all three for a burnished heart. It's a 2-2. Two -two. I can pay three to sacrifice it and search for two basic land cards, put them on the battlefield, tapped, then shuffle. At least I have a blocker now. Although I kind of want to use him, his ability, so I might just let stuff go through. We'll have to see. That's all we can do. We'll pass. Untap, upkeep, draw. I'll play Treasure Vault, a good card for this deck. Uh, it taps for colorless, but you can pay double X and sacrifice it to make X treasure tokens. Really good, like, middle or late game when you have a ton of mana to dump into it. Make a bunch of tokens and he gets super big. I'm going to tap three to play Commander Sphere. Tap another three to play Briar Bridge Tracker. It's a two, three with Vigilance. Whenever it enters the battlefield, investigate. So I make a clue token. And as long as you control a token, he gets plus, well, she gets plus two plus zero. So it's now, let me put this over here, it's now a 4-3 with Vigilance. And the Doctor is now a 4-4 with Trample. 
It's all we can do right now, and I don't want to go swinging into there just yet, because he has enough creature power that can destroy the Doctor. We're going to have to try and get him much bigger before we can swing in. We'll pass. Untap upkeep draw for turn. Going to play a mountain, tapping all six to play Ramos, Dragon Engine. It's a 4-4 four, four flyer. Whenever you cast a spell, put a plus one, plus one counter on Ramos for each color in that spell's cost. You can remove five counters from it to make double Wu Berg to spend, but you can only do that once per turn. Unfortunately, I don't have any other things, but with Hardened Scales out, those counters are going to go up quicker once I'm able to start casting spells. We will then pass turn. Untap up, keep draw. Going to play a mountain for turn. Tapping Soul Ring to crack Mirrored Landscape to get two more mountains on the battlefield tapped. Well, unfortunately, we really don't have much to play, so we're just going to go to combat, but thankfully we have a ton to swing with. Yeah, I'm going to continue to swing Cranko at you. Now, unfortunately, Goblin Lackey will no longer get through, but I don't have any real Goblin I try to do, but it's a Goblin we saw first game. I don't want to play it again. It's just a little frustrating because it's like, it's just, you, you've seen it. It's, it's, I'll say it. It's Squee Mon Dubious Monarch. We already know how bad that can get because all he has to do is attack and he makes a goblin that's, you know, tapped and attacking. Although everyone does seem to have blockers out, I guess, that could kill Squee. So I guess it's not that big a deal. Perhaps we'll play it on the second main phase, I guess. But point being, no one can really get through unless we just swing for volume. And to be fair, I don't know that we really want to do that just yet. Well, we'll do this. We're going to send Krenko at you and these two goblins at you. You're obviously going to block one of them, but you will take one damage. And then you, this goes up by one. We then make three more goblin tokens. And you're going to take three. One, two, three. Because, like I said, I want that ability off of the Burnished Heart, so we'll let it slide. Probably a bad idea, but we'll see. Because she's already behind. She doesn't have any mana rocks that sped her up, so it's not going to be great. It's, uh, second main phase, we will cast Squeed Dubious Monarch. It has haste. It's 2-2, and whenever it attacks, you create a goblin that's tapped and attacking. And you may cast Squee from your graveyard by doing some other stuff. Forgot about that last game, probably forget about this game. Haha, -ha, unskilled. We're gonna pass. Untap, upkeep, draw. Play a forest return. Well, yeah. Obviously, we're gonna tap all five to get me the immortal out. It's a 3 3. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put your choice of a first strike, vigilance, or menace counter on me the immortal. Counters remain on it, regardless of where it goes, unless it goes to your hand or library. And you may cast it from your graveyard by discarding two cards in addition to paying the rest of its cost. We're going to move to combat. It's going to get a menace counter on it. I'm not going to bother swinging the burnished heart. We're going to go ahead and pass. Untap over here, upkeep, draw. Okay, I'm going to tap three to play the... I just like to have my enchantments and artifacts on the right side. It's a stupid thing. I don't know why. It serves no purpose, but I just Feel it better. So I'm going to play Fey Offering. At the beginning of each end step, if you cast both a creature spell and a non-creature spell this turn, create a clue token, a food token, and a treasure token. Huge. We're going to go ahead and tap two to play Tough Cookie. It's a two-two. When it enters the battlefield, make a food token. We now have one of each. And you can pay three, target non-creature artifact you control, becomes a 4-4 artifact creature until end of turn, and pay two and sacrifice tough cookie, uh, you gain three life. I will then tap the commander sphere for, th for green and one other to play the enchantment Welcome to Sweet Tooth. Create a 1-1 one, one white human creature token, and then at each upkeep it will go through until it's the third one and then gets destroyed. So as of right now, the third Doctor is a 5-5, five five, but it's about to get much, much bigger. However, they still have a ton of stuff over there. We could swing somewhere else because it's 3-2, so they can block and kill the Doctor. They can block and kill the Doctor. They can't, but I don't know that we really want to go swinging in. That's the problem, so we need to just hold back for a bit. So we're going to move to our end step. We did, in fact, cast a creature and a non-creature, which means we now make one of each. 
So we made a food, a clue, and a treasure. So now, six, seven, eight. Now the doctor is an eight, eight with trample. Now we're getting somewhere. I still can't believe how good this deck is built off of just what I had, you know, from the, the collector boosters of the third doctor, <laughs> of Doctor Who that I bought and split with my friend Dell, and the cards that I just already own. I know there's got to be some better synergy cards that create tokens uh, that are creatures or whatever that also do other things. So if I can look into that, I definitely think I can make the Doctor a much better deck. And people have said to add a companion to open up more colors, which I totally thought of originally and, and agree with the concept because that's what you're supposed to do. The Doctors are supposed to have companions that unlock a third color. But right now, I don't really want to. I just... None of the companions seemed interesting to me, and all it would do was add another color, which could dilute the deck, which means I won't get the colors I need, blah, 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 and I think it's doing pretty well. So as I told my friends and then some of the comments on the first matchup, it's definitely something I'm going to look into in the future if I feel the deck isn't growing properly, but for right now, I think it's good with just being the two colors. That was the end step. We're going to pass. Untap, upkeep, draw. Play another mountain. And now we need to cast some stuff. We will tap these three to play Abzan Falconer. So two, three with Outlast. You can pay one white and put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Outlast only as a sorcery. And each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it has flying. We cast a colored spell that only has one color. But because of hardened scales, Ramos is going to get two counters on it. Now it has double flying. Man, I have got to start reading my freaking cards before I play stuff. So first we're gonna play tap three to play the chromatic lantern we drew. Then I'm gonna tap the chromatic lantern in the last land to play the legendary artifact, Ozolith the Shattered Spire. If one or more counters will be put on something, a creature you control, that many plus one are put on instead. With Hardened Stills, I would have just put, you know, three on. Uh, now, I don't know if that means it would have been four. I don't think so. If one or more counters is put on an artifact or creature you control, that many plus one. Ramos was going to get one because it was a one-colored spell. This would add one, this would add one. I don't think they would add on top of each other. Correct me in the comments, but I believe it just would have gotten three. Uh, doesn't matter because I didn't do that, but for it could matter a lot in the future when I start playing multicolored spells. Now we have a 6-6 six, six flyer. I still think we should have that up for blocking for right now because we got an 8-8 eight, eight over there. Although maybe cracking over here, we probably should do that. I think we're going to go to combat and swing 6 commander in the air at you because you know what? If we just keep making him bigger and don't take any counters off and keep swinging, we can get rid of that pretty simply before we have to really worry about it. So we're going to do that and pass. And we still have that up to block if we need to. Untap. This makes four goblins total. Draw for turn. Well, that's pretty gross, but we'll do it. Mountain and a uh, soul ring for raid bombardment. Enchantment. Whenever a creature you control with power two or less attacks, Raid Bombardment deals one damage to the player or Planeswalker that creature is attacking. Yep, not cool. Okay, we didn't think of it. We had plenty of mana to do it. I need to remember that I have a really good instance that will stop Ramos on the next turn. I'm not going to walk it back, but we'll have to, we need to try and remember that for next turn, i.e. me. So we're going to go to combat. We, uh, three goes up to four. See, now no one is really easily attacked. And if we attack swing in, people are going to... Well, I guess this is the best place. However, this is the one, yeah, see, this has... that has the commander damage already, but they can stack block and kill Krenko. So we're going to go to combat. I'm going to swing Krenko at you, and these five at you. Two attack triggers going. Uh, this is going to get a counter, and it's going to make four goblin. Then, now his power is greater than two, so this isn't going to work for him. That's coming at you. What do you want to do? Ramos is already flying. He doesn't have trample. I think we're going to go ahead and block right now. 
it's i mean that's a good thing to, for other creatures to have the the counters and get flying but right now i don't feel like getting a ton of cranko damage character doesn't realize that they have an answer for ramos on the, in their hand so then we've got five coming at you however uh, on attacks these are all one ones so that it's going to raid bombardment's going to deal one damage to you for each attacking creature so you're just going to automatically take five and then you'll block this one with the burnished heart and one of these with that so you will take another three one two three nothing we can do no end step triggers oh i do there was some triggers off of that uh let's see one one two this definitely gets two more counters, two more oil counters, which means its power is bigger now because it's getting plus one plus zero for each oil counter on it. So it's now a three one. And technically tokens go to the graveyard and then get immediately like vaporized. So they do hit the graveyard for all that graveyard aspect things, but they don't stay there because you can't get tokens out of the graveyard. So I think I missed one or two from the last time when I attacked, but you know what? It's fine. If it was a if it was buffing everything, I'd be a little more concerned, but it's just buffing the front. So it's just still like anything could block it and kill it no matter how big it gets, unless it gets somehow well, it does have trample though, so that is a concern. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and pass. Untap upkeep draw. Going to tap for a blue and a green to play Simic Ascendancy. We saw that last game, I think. I'm then going to play Simic Growth Chamber, bouncing the forest back to my hand. I think I played those two Simics right back to back in the last game, which is like, oh, okay. Oh, and I have a Haze of Pollen in this hand I need to keep mana up for, but I really want to take care of the hard pal. I think it's stupid, but we're going to do it. We're going to tap three to sacrifice the Burnished Heart to get two basics. The nice thing is they don't have to be the same type like in Mirrored Landscape. So we'll get an island and a forest. Oops. I know it's dumb, but I have a chromatic lantern that I really want to get out, and I needed the extra lands to have enough mana to get that out, because then, you know, you can spend mana of any color as if it was any color, and it makes five mana that you can start dumping things out faster. So I just really wanted to ramp into that. We're gonna move to combat. I'm gonna choose to give her a counter, a plus one plus one counter, which means Simic Ascendancy gets one. But unfortunately, she's a 4-4 four -four with Menace, and that's it. So I really don't want to go swinging anywhere. Especially since we got rid of the Burnt Heart, I need to keep something up to block. So we're going to pass. Untap, upkeep, draw. 1, 2, 3, 4 to play Ethereal Investigator. A 2-3 flyer. When Ethereal Investigator enters the battlefield, investigate X times, where X is the number of opponents you have. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, make a 1-1 one -one spirit with flying. So it enters. We're going to make three clues put that up to five then i'm going to tap three and play crack open destroy target artifact or enchantment create a treasure token we're going to get rid of raid bombardment because that's just gross and then i'm going to make a treasure token boom so now the third doctor is a 12 12 and we have quite a few blockers. So what have we got over here? Four, five, six, set well, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep, not enough to kill him. So the good doctor is going to make a house call. But um bum like you haven't heard that a bajillion times with uh commander players doing doctor things. But yes, a 12-12 with trample commander is coming at you. Wait, hang on, sorry. I forgot I should have put a reminder on my deck. At my upkeep, no, after your draw step, this moves to the second thing, which is create a food token. So that just makes he's, means he's one more powerful. So he's a 13-13 with trample, but that's, that's still important. I think we're going to go ahead and put all of these in front of it. I don't really have anything in my hand. I think we'll toss Goblin Lackey in there too. So that's four, five, six, seven off of the 13. We're still going to take six damage. And look, that's six from a bunch of commanders. Now, the nice thing is that because Krenko's his design, we can get a bunch of goblins back very next turn. 
yeah, I mean, as you can see, I'm not going to say that this is going to win. I'm just going to say, but like, this has won on stream at, when I was on Queen of Cardboards Twitch channel. Go check her out. She's got a YouTube as well, but check out her Twitch stream. That's what she does on a regular basis. Very cool. Lots of cool guests. But the point is, like, it won on that, which is impressive. And it's just, every time I've played it, it's done a very impressive job of getting him big. Now, of course, these decks aren't running a ton of a removal. You know, board wipes yet, so there's a lot. So it wouldn't always be like this. But I'm still proud of it. I'm just happy that it is doing so well off of just nothing special that I... I didn't go out and buy $30, $40 worth of singles off of, like, you know, the websites to beef up this deck. This is literally just cards I cracked out of the Doctor Who's boosters and cards I had. I don't believe there's any end step triggers. Uh, there is, actually. And I did cast a creature and a non-creature spell, so I'm going to make another one of each. That is insane. So that's 14, 15, 16. He's now a 16, 16 commander. That's like getting close to lethal. We're going to pass. All right. Untap, upkeep, draw for turn. Going to play a forest. Uh, four, five, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. To play Hazma, Guardian of Arashin. It's a five, five. This, well, I didn't read it, of course. Costs one less to cast for each creature you control with a... Okay, so that's just one. Um, actually, we we'll might as well untap the Chromatic Lantern. Uh, creature spells you cast cost one less to cast for each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it. So... Now, all the creatures I have cost one less because we have that. Unfortunately, I don't have a good creature spell to play next, so we're going to have to wait a little bit. I could afford to. I have now because it costs less. I have, you know, the equivalent of five mana to cast this, but it has Devour too, and I don't want to devour that card. So, so that's again, there's, there's cards in here that are good with counters, but they're not ideal, so I'm probably going to have to take some out and try and tweak it. But anyway... Hazma is a two-colored spell, which means Ramos is going to get two counters, but they're going to go up by one and one, so he's going to get four counters. And it is now a 10-10 flying. Again, I could remove five counters to make double Wu Bird, but I have nothing to spend it on. So it wouldn't make any sense. Oh, but I will tap a green and one other and tap this to put a plus one plus one counter on... Asthma. Now, if I left Abzan alive, he would have flying, but whatever. Point is, now creature spells cost two less to cast because I have two creatures with counters on it. Not for long, but that's beside the point. We're going to move to combat. I'm not I'm like, oh man, you're, you're weak now. I'm going to send a 10-10 in the air at you in response. I'm going to tap two, cast into fire. Choose one. Deals one damage to up to two targets or exile target artifact. Ramos is an artifact creature. It's going to get exiled. And now he costs two more to cast. Although technically one less because of that, so at least there's something. So it was good that I put that on there. I have two mana. Can't do anything with it. We're going to pass turn. Play a Rogue's Passage. That's actually kind of important. We're going to move to combat. I'm going to tap... Four mana and Rogue's Passage to make Krenko unblockable. And I think we're going to send him... Well, we should send it at you. That's really what we should do. So we will do that. We're going to move to combat and send Krenko at you. It's going to go up by one, making five Goblin tokens. This is a three-something. But there are ways to get this bigger, aren't there? So we're going to go ahead and send three one ones at you. You're going to block one with this. It's going to go down to two, but then this will get another oil counter on it. You'll go down by two, and then four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Nothing else I can do over here, however, so we're going to pass. Unfortunately, me, the immortal, is not doing very well. It's just being real slow, and I don't have a ton of other creatures in it yet. Untap, upkeep, draw. Hey, a Rogue's Passage over here, though. That's cool. I'm going to go ahead and tap 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 to play that Chromatic Lantern. 
I'm going to tap Chromatic Lantern for five red mana to play Hexplate Wallbreaker. It's an artifact equipment uh, for Mirrodin, which I'm going to have to look up. So it's a quick creature, gets plus two, plus two. Whenever a quick creature attacks, if it's the first combat phase of the turn, untap each attacking creature after this phase, there's an additional combat phase. That's why, mainly why it's in here. So four Mirrodin makes a 2-2 two, two red rebel card creature, and then attaches whatever it is to it. But you can pay four mana to re-equip it to something else, which is what I'm going to do eventually, I guess, technically. I don't care. I like that picture. So this is now 4-4, four, four, and if it attacks, uh, there it'll. And it's the first combat. It'll be another combat. It doesn't have haste or anything, and obviously I want to equip it to her. So we're gonna move to combat. We're gonna get a counter, but obviously the important thing is to put vigilance on the immortal because you can move. Um, put your choice of a plus one plus one first strike vigilance or menace. So this does not go up because that's not a like well. Yeah, whenever one or more counter, plus one plus one counters. So she's still just a 3-3, three, three, but now at least I could attack with her and she would stay um, untapped. I don't really want to, though, because they have five creatures more than that enough to, to kill her. So we're going to go ahead and uh, pass. But once we next turn, and we can equip this, and then you Rogue's Passage, she's going to become a force to be working with. Sort of. We're going to pass. Untap. Upkeep. Draw for turn, and then we move to the last spot of this. Put X plus one plus one counters on target creature you control, where X is the number of foods you control plus one. I control four, so that means, oh my gosh, we are putting five one one tokens, plus one plus one tokens, counters, whatever, sorry, on the doctor. He is insanely big. Let's see, that's 14, 19, 20, 21. He is now lethal, com lethal commander damage. If I could get a Rogue's Passage over here, boy, howdy. We'll tap three for a natural connection. Search for a basic land, put it in the battlefield, tapped. I've just had that for a little while. Oop, that's not that. I've had it for a little while. I just want to use it, get out of my hand, and get a land out of the deck and hopefully get to something better right now. I won't be able to trigger this because I do not have a creature card to play. Well, I shouldn't, but we're going to do things. Oops. What in the heck are you doing? Okay. Tapping these three, not tapping the island that I should have gotten one of. So we're going to tap these to make two blue and two others to play the enchantment thopter spy network at the beginning of your upkeep so i need that again uh, if you control no if you control an artifact make a one one thopter with flying whenever one or more artifact creatures you control deal combat damage to a player draw a card now the thopters will not buff the doctor because they are creature tokens but still that if they're flying and they get through, I get to draw a card, and that's the real reason why it's in. Okay, we're going to go to combat. I'm going, you have nothing in hand. We're going to swing the doctor at you. As we said, it's 10, 15, no, no, wait, wait. 10, 14, 19, 20, 21, trample commander. However, you do have a lot to block with. And you already have six damage to begin with. So if you block with everything... And it's toughness, not power, so this is still just a 1, so it'd be 6 damage off of the 21, and you have 6 damage, uh, it would not matter. You would still die to commander damage. You have no tricks up your sleeve. There's nothing you can do, so there's really no point in blocking. I mean, we'll say they block anyway, so it's 6 damage off of 21. 15, but then it's 15 plus 6 that you already have, back up to 21. However. This time we're going to try and remember that someone's deceased. Kaboosh. All right, they are done. Well done, Doctor. Move to their end step. No end step triggers off of that. We're going to pass. 
Obviously, it's about to become Arch Enemy because there's no way anyone's going to get past the Lethal Commander damage. You know, the fact that they don't have a Rogue's Passage is the only saving grace right now. We're going to untap, upkeep, draw for turn. Costs one less, so it's going to cost seven. One, two, three, four. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. To bring out Ramos Dragon Engine again. Creatures cost one less, so we're going to tap a green and one other to play Land of War Visionary. Enters the battlefield, we draw a card. And we also put a plus one, plus one counter on Giant Ramos, but it's going to go up to three, thanks to our buffs. And now creature cards cost two less to cast. However, I can't really do anything. Now let's see what we've got over here. We've got a 6-6. Six, six, but more than enough power to destroy it, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. And those creatures aren't all that important. We would totally sacrifice them if, you know, they went. So we would lose three creatures, they would lose one. But because that's so big, we need that heavy toughness to and power to possibly dissuade the Doctor from coming in this direction first. Not much else we can do. We're going to pass. All right, untap, upkeep, draw. We're going to tap four, and I think I may have miscounted with the Simic Growth Chamber last game, but whatever, to equip this onto her. So this is now just a little 2-2 that we'll use to block. But she is three, four, five, six. She's a 6-6 six, six with menace, menace and Vigilance. But when she attacks, there's an extra combat step. All right, so we're going to move. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to tap four in Rogue's Passage to make me the immortal unblockable. We're going to move to combat. We're going to put a plus one, plus one counter on her. Puts one on there. Because she has vigilance, we're going to swing her in your general doctor direction. So it's three, four, five, six, seven commander damage. However, when equipped creature attacks, if it's the first combat, it is. Untap it. Each attacking creature after this phase, there's an additional combat phase. So we're going to move to combat a second time. Every time we go to combat, she gets a counter. That goes up at the beginning of combat on your turn. Yep. So now we're going to swing her at you again. So it's three, six, seven, eight this time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Fifteen commander. She only has to get through one more time with Rogue's Passage. That's pretty sweet. But that's all we can do. There's no end step triggers. We're going to go ahead and pass turn. Untap. No more upkeep triggers. We're going to draw for turn. Going to tap three to play Return from the Wilds. Choose two. Search your library for a basic land card. Put on the battlefield tapped and shuffle. Create a 1-1 one, one white human creature token and create a food token. So we're going to create a food and we're going to go ahead and get a island to the battlefield. I don't know that it's going to matter because I think me, the immortal, is going to go ahead and KO us on her turn with commander damage, but we'll try. Oh, I do actually have an upkeep trigger. Sorry, I forgot. Uh, I do make a 1-1 one, one Thopter. I'm going to go ahead and sacrifice commander sphere to draw a card. And it's a land. That does not help. I was kind of hoping it was... Well, I'm not even sure what I was hoping it was, but not a land. I did draw my second card, however. So that means I make a 1-1 Spirit with Fly. Right, these little guys really aren't going to do much. These two are going to try. 10, 15, 20, 22. The third Doctor is a 22-22 with Trample. We're going to move to combat. We're going to swing both of these at you. The Ethereal Investigator is a 2-3 in the air. And Lethal Commander coming at you. You can block both of them. Well, you can block the, the third Doctor. However, in response, we're going to tap to add four green mana, only needing two of it to play Haze of Pollen. Prevent all combat damage that we dealt this turn. Haha. -ha. It's all, I mean, 
He can't do anything else. We did not play a creature. However, at this point, I am forgetting a ton of resources, am I not? I love the fact that it's so big that I was like, oh yeah, so let's let's try and do some stuff here. We're going to uh, pay two to sacrifice one of these clues and draw a card. I'm going to pay another two and crack a treasure to play Compulsive Research. Target player draws three cards, then player that player discards two cards unless they discard a land. Well, we know I have a land to discard, so one, two, three. We discard a land. That does not help. I mean, we're good. I guess the point is we keep going because we're we're at whatever, right? Fifteen commander. That means she only needs six. She's already past six. She's going to be way bigger and have two combats. So we might as well crack two treasures down to one and crack a clue to draw a card. Boom. Nope. It's a ramp spell. I no longer have the mana necessary to crack anything. I couldn't even gain life, but that wouldn't help against commander damage. So yeah, great showing, Doctor, but the me, the Immortal, with nothing on the field, really, a couple things is going to win it, but that's interesting. We're going to pass turn. Although not, maybe not, right? Because this still is viable over here. So we untap, we upkeep, we draw. Necroblossom Snarl, it's going to come in tap because I don't have anything to reveal. Okay, creature spells cost two less, so I'm going to tap two green. And one other to play Mycolith, a 4 4 with Devour 2. At the begin and as it enters, you may sacrifice any number of creatures. This gets twice that many plus one plus one counters. So we're going to sacrifice the Lana War Visionary so that it comes in with two counters. At the beginning of your upkeep, you make a 1 1 green Sapperling creature token for every counter on it. Now, green creature, or green spell, so that means we're going to add three mana to, add three counters to Ramos, making it a 10-10. We now have three creatures with counters, so our creature spells cost three less. That means all we need to do is tap a white and one other to play Constable of the Realm. Renowned two when this creature deals combat damage to a player. If it isn't renowned, put two counters on it. When one or more counters are put on the constable, exile up to one other target, non-land permanent, until the constable leaves the battlefield. So, white spell, another three, up to nine. Now, you may be saying, well, Brian, why do you have monocolor spells in this deck? Yes, I get it, but they're, they're cards that deal with counters. Again, these is, this is built off of what I had, so yeah. Maybe these two are going to come out, because I have another creature in the, the deck that has Devour. But I like the fact that if we can just Devour one thing, it's going to start pumping out all kinds of Sapperlings to use as blockers or whatever. Now, unfortunately, I could totally take counters off of Ramos to make 10 mana, but I have no cards in hand, nothing to do with it, and no one is able to get me cards. But we do have a 13-13 in the air. Obviously, we're going to send it at you. Because now, by doing that, we could draw their attention. They might leave the Doctor alone, but the Doctor is still huge. We took out, it's still a 15, it's still a 17 17. So it's absolutely not something you should leave alone. If I had gone through all of the tokens and stuff like that, and it was down to like five or something like that, yeah, maybe you'd leave it alone and come after this. But she still needs to finish that. Plus one hit will kill him, and then she still has one more combat with that thing that can come over this way. And we're going to make her unblockable with Rogue's Passage, which is till end of turn, so no matter how many combats she gets in one turn, they're all going to be unblockable. So there you go. Over to you is going to be, as I said, 13. And, okay, down to 14. You're still alive, though, but 13 damage. So one more swing of this commander, you're dead. And there you go. I mean, that's a thing, right? One swing from this, she can, let's see, 
there's no commander damage on this card character yet, and they're at 35 life. Even two swings from her is not going to kill this. Unless we have, unless we draw a bunch of cards that allows us to put a bunch of counters on it. Which might be, we kind of tried to do that, but we'll see. There's nothing else we can do here. We're going to go ahead and pass turn. I hope the audio is okay. I know it's definitely weaker when I'm on this side. I apologize, but if we can just make it to February. I know I can get a better rigging up and put the original camera, the, the Logitech camera that I liked back, and then it'll be back to the way it was like two months ago. So untap up, keep draw. All right, I'm gonna tap a forest to play Gromp, which is the Spore Frog. Spore frog. So 1-1, one, one can sacrifice it, prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn. So that should help against that. We need 4 mana to trigger Rogue's Passage, which we're just going to do right now. We're going to say, tapping 4, she is now unblockable till end of turn. We're going to tap this for 5 red mana and 1 more to play... Aki Battle Squad, a 6-6, six, six. whenever one or more modified creatures you control attack, untap all creatures you control, or, wait, wait, sorry, untap all modified creatures you control. After this combat phase, there's an additional combat phase. This ability triggers only once each turn. Now the problem is, and, and please let me know in the comments if you know for sure, I'm not sure if those two are going to be able to stack properly. Because... The equipment says whenever equipped creature attacks, if it's the first combat of the turn, untap each attacking creature, and after this phase, there's an additional combat phase. They say whenever a modified creature, which is something with equipment, auras, or counters on it, so she's a, a modified creature. Whenever a modified creature attacks, untap modified creatures you control, and after this combat phase, there's an additional combat phase. I think they stack. I think if because the first time they'll stack, but it'll only happen once. So I'll have a maximum of three combats in one turn because I think I'll go to combat. It's the first combat. So this will trigger and that will trigger and they'll both go on the stack. So I don't know. So if this goes on the stack first and then this goes and resolves, then it won't be the first combat anymore. So that one would, I don't know. I think I can stack that. I think it's like, well, because they're my triggers, so I say the Aki Battle Squad goes on the Akai, whatever, it goes on the battlefield on the stack first, then the artifact. So the artifact will resolve first, seeing the first combat, making another combat, and then the Battle Squad will have a combat. Because this effect is only happening once. It's just having, it's just a third combat. But all right, well, let's do it. That's how I'm going to play it. Let me know if I'm wrong. We're going to move to combat. She's going to get a counter. This gets a counter. We're going to go ahead and swing at you. Unblockable. Three, seven, eight, nine. 24 commander damage. You are done. Excellent, excellent showing, but unfortunately you are gone. And I think that wins the game because then we're going to move to the second combat. It's going to go up, go up, five, ten. So that's ten commander damage at you. Unblockable. And then the third combat triggers. She goes up again to six. This goes up to six, six, five, eleven. That's another eleven commander damage. 21 exactly. Skaboosh. Dead. Done. Now hopefully I don't see some major uh, problem at the end of the game when I'm reviewing this or something, but I think that's how it's going to go. This, I'm shade, I'm not 100%. I think I did it right. I think it's, I can stack those triggers and I think I can do it that way. I'm not even sure where to look it up, to be honest. I'm just relying on my good friend, friend Brad, who always comments on the videos and is a level two judge, so, hey Brad, does that work? If not, let's take a thought experiment for just a second and be like, okay, let's say it doesn't, let's say she just gets two combats. This, the doctor is still dead, and that is at 10 commander damage. 
They try and swing back. We crack the Spore Frog, prevent all combat damage, so they can't get through. We still kill them on the, the next turn. So the winner is still the same. It's just whether it's one turn earlier or not. But there you go. That's my Me the Immortal deck, along with all these others. I think it has potential. It definitely needs tweaked. It needs to be a little faster, and it definitely needs to get some, like, at least tokens out for blocking. But I like it. I really love the fact that she has that cool ability. So even if someone did blow her up, she would just go right to the command zone like this. Well, not this would come off. But she would still have Vigilance, still the Menace, and still have all those counters whenever I did replay her. Hope you enjoyed watching. Hope you don't mind the sound issues and you're going to you know stick with me a little bit longer till I get it fixed. And I will see you next time.